Some dirt bike mods are a necessity, some not so much. We like bling and we especially like to show it to our peers in order to compensate for uh, riding skill. That being said, which mods did I have to do for going racing? Again, as a disclaimer, I'm racing to finish this hard enduro event, not to class in the top three. It's hard to make a suspension work well in terrain like this, or like this, or like this, with varying speeds, rider weight, and many more variables. Stock, the KYBs on this factory model are really good, but no matter how good they are, they will never be perfect. Because Sherco doesn't know how much I weigh, how and where I ride, they lack all this information. So what you get is a suspension that works okay, but it's not ideal for myself and for the slower, more technical riding that I end up doing. So 750 euros later, I got them serviced and revalved by the guys at Shock, a Polish suspension tuner. I had my doubts if this was going to be worth it, if I would actually feel a difference at my riding level. Long story short, it was worth every penny. The suspension is so compliant, it sucks bumps and rocks like they're not even there. These guys managed to unleash the full potential of the closed cartridge KYB forks and shocks. For 750 euros, you get one of the best suspension setups you can have on a bike. Anything better than this will cost a lot more and you'll start to hit the wall of diminishing returns pretty quickly. For dirt riding, being tall is a huge advantage. As you can see, I wouldn't know that because my short ass has a tough time touching the ground properly. And you see this mostly in the trickiest situations, the one where picking up the bike is the toughest. I tried riding with just a low seat, but that does not fix the main issue. The right height when the bike is in a tricky spot, and I need to get on top of it. In the end, the combination of a low seat, properly set suspension sag and lowering kit made this motorcycle way more approachable and confidence inspiring. Being able to set a foot on the ground can be the difference between passing through a section or a failure. Now, sure, the ground clearance does decrease a little, but not that much. 3cm lower seat height does not equal a 3cm lower ride height. And if you're short like me, you'll need all of those 3cm. No matter how many precautions you take, you will crash. And when you do, you want to have your controls be protected so they don't break. No, personally, for hard enduro, I don't like wrap around full metal handguards. I get it, they offer the most protection. But I tried them on my old KTM and they feel like buying a light sports car but they're putting off-road wheels on the front axle. To me, the steering feel gets noticeably heavier and I don't like that. Ever since I discovered flag style guards, I never went back. But these guards only protect your hands from branches and roost. They don't do much for your levers, but there is a solution. Well, a combo of them. First, foldable levers. The stock ones basically don't fold and if you crash there is a big chance you'll break them. So I replaced them with these adjustable and foldable ones. This helped us with horizontal impact, but what about vertical? What if the lever gets caught and broken in an up-down movement? For that reason, I use Teflon tape. And I don't tighten the bolts quite as much. This allows the lever to stay in place normally, but if a crash occurs, I mean when a crash occurs, it allows the levers to slide up or down on the bars. Then you just pick up the bike, slide the levers back to their position, and off you go. Also, I do like running levers more inboard than stock. Look, all of these don't create a safer solution for full metal guards. But they work well enough for me, and I am willing to compromise at 5% in protection for a better steering feel. One thing though, if you plan to run this setup, make sure to check your bolts every 2-3 to three rides. Just make sure they haven't untightened from vibrations. Ask me how I know this. Protection is essential, especially if you don't want to end up with a TLC TV show. But we already went through most of the basics, so I'm not going to go into full detail, but here are some of the items that I consider to be pretty important. You might notice that I am not running a pipe guard. The debate on this is as big as Trump versus Biden, Christians versus atheists, or Ben Shapiro versus um, anybody. But I decided to free the pipe. The reason is uh, this. What the pipe guard does is it keeps the resonator looking shiny and dent free. 
but it doesn't actually absorb any impact, it just channels it somewhere else. And in this case, it does so by bending this bit over time, and that's unfixable. Without such a guard, you will get bumps like this. And it's fine, you're most likely not even going to notice them while riding, but these can easily be straightened out without replacing the entire resonator. Much cheaper and also lighter. Because this thin metal takes the beating, the side will not bend anymore. So your pipe will last a lot longer, but that's just my opinion. And no, I don't like those full metal shields either. They are heavy and gather mud and can make your bike feel like a BMW GS at times. They're not for me. We need to also mention the grippy seat, which is a must for me on some hill climbs. It helps save energy and in a race, every ounce of energy helps, especially when you're fighting for survival in a race like I am. And what also helps for a newbie are pull straps. They do exactly what they say, help you pull the bike, and they are worth their weight in gold. Four tires I swap depending on the race, but the one consistent mod is the mousses, and lately I've been trying different drilled mousses to see how they perform and how long they last. One clever thing about the Sherco is this space under the seat. I call it a tool space, I don't know if that was the intended purpose, but uh, who cares. I carry around some zip ties, a 10mm and 8mm socket with the driver for them, a spare chain link in case it decides to go kaboom on me, and another more universal tool. Not a great lot, but just small things I found useful to have on the track. I might be carrying an extra lever or something in the future, but I'm not set yet on a definitive toolbox. All I know is I want to carry nothing on me and everything on the bike. This is not the wildest list of mods, but all of these are functional and they all help me in one way or another. And you know what's funny? This motorcycle is now perfectly set up for myself. And all this for just a few hundred euros more than a stock KTM 300 DXC. And all this for less than the price of a stock 6 days KTM. Which is not a better bike. Definitely not better than this version of the Sherco. Definitely not for myself and for what I needed to do. So yeah, I, I am pretty pleased actually. And I can't wait for the season to properly start and maybe even give you a little final review of this weapon once I finish the first race on the beauty. But until then, stay tuned and uh, have a good one.